Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Make sure you check out the link in the description box below to go to a folder that has a bunch of free PDF study notes. Um, I will drop a picture of the final board in that folder so you can have a picture of the final board to study from. Today we're going to talk about XLD auger. Make sure that you also know that I have a micro diagnostic test playlist. I think it's called microbiology diagnostic tests. But it has all kinds of tests, you know, the catalase test, the coagulase test, it has a bunch of uh, differential augers, it has a bunch of different uh, videos about different microbiology stains that you'll do in lab. So if you're taking a microbiology lab course, please, please, please check out that video. There are so, or that playlist, I mean, there's so many great videos for you there. Okay, so let's talk about XLD auger. XLD stands for xylose lysine deoxycholate. Now you should recognize here that xylose ends in os, so it's a sugar. So it's a type of sugar, just like sucrose or fructose, but it's got a different structure. And then lysine is one of our amino acids, and then we've got deoxycholate in there as a different chemical compound. So that's what the XLD stands for. Now XLD auger is both selective and differential. Let's talk about what this means. Selective means that it allows for the growth of some types of organisms while inhibiting the growth of other types of organisms. In this case, XLD auger is selective because it contains a bile salt, sodium deoxycholate, that's also where part of the name comes from, sodium deoxycholate, it's a bile salt, and that inhibits gram-positive bacterial growth. So basically gram-negative bacteria will be able to grow, gram-positive bacteria will be inhibited. Um, if you need a refresher on the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative cell walls, check out my video on that topic. Now, XLD auger is also differential. That means that of the stuff that is able to grow on XLD auger, there will be differences in their usually color, um, some kind of phenotypic difference so that you can distinguish one thing from another. And in this case, what XLD auger is helping you to distinguish is Shigella from Salmonella. Now, um, there will be some other types of things that can grow as well, some other types of coliforms, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But when XLD auger is being used in a micro lab, it's typically to distinguish Shigella from Salmonella or to see if one of these is present in a sample. Now, also present in XLD auger is yeast extract. So this is a sort of a complex media, right, with that yeast extract. Yeast extract is used because it adds nitrogen, amino acids, carbon, vitamins, basically the things that Shigella and Salmonella and other coliforms need to grow. It also has phenol red. Now, phenol red is an indicator. So it's an indicator. The media is initially going to be red, okay? So phenol red is red at this pH, about 7.4, but if there is fermentation going on, so fermentation of xylose or one of the other sugars we're gonna talk about over here, if there's some kind of fermentation happening, the colonies that are able to ferment the sugar and produce an acid, right, that will lower the pH, and the colonies themselves will turn yellow. Okay, so initially the media is red, and then if there's fermentation happening, you're going to see yellow colonies. Now let's talk about Shigella and Salmonella. These are the two that we are using XLD auger to distinguish between. Shigella species, this SPP right there means species, multiple Shigella species, they cannot use xylose, okay? Um, they also cannot use, at least not very well, lactose and sucrose, so we'll get to those later. But they can't use the xylose that the salmonella can use, and so they will grow as red colonies. So Shigella on XLD media grows as red colonies with no black centers. That's going to be important later. So no black centers, just plain red colonies. Now let's talk about Salmonella. Salmonella is a lot more complex. Salmonella, first of all, will rapidly ferment 
that xylose sugar. So it will ferment the xylose sugar with an acid product, and this will turn the colonies yellow, as we said right here, turn the colonies yellow, lowering the pH, that phenol red indicator um, then kicks in and you've got a yellow color. But then, you know, this happens pretty rapidly. So then salmonella will decarboxylate lysine. Now that is because salmonella has an enzyme, uh, lysine decarboxylase, Shigella lacks that enzyme, but salmonella has the lysine decarboxylase, it can decarboxylate lysine once the xylose is exhausted, once it's already used up all the xylose, and this decarboxylation of lysine will produce amines, and of course amines are basic or alkaline, so they will raise the pH. And so those colonies that were once yellow are going to turn red. Now at this point you might be saying, wait, hold on, how can we distinguish Shigella from Salmonella if they both are making red colonies? Well, the really the, the distinguishing factor here is that the XLD auger, along with the xylose and the lysine and the deoxycholate and the and the um, the yeast extract and the phenol red, there's a lot of stuff in this auger. It also has a hydrogen sulfide indicator system. I'm going to put some stars here because this is really how we're going to be able to distinguish Shigella from Salmonella. Now, what is this? Uh, hydrogen sulfide indicator system. It involves sodium thiosulfate and ferric ammonium citrate. And together, these things, when there is hydrogen sulfide production, it gives black centers on the colonies. And only salmonella is capable of uh, producing the hydrogen sulfide. So, Shigella will make red colonies, Salmonella will make red colonies with black centers. Now there are a couple of other sugars. In addition to all the other ingredients we've talked about, there's also lactose and sucrose present. And these are here to prevent false positives. So let me explain. Lactose and sucrose are present in large quantities, okay? Large quantities, large concentrations. They are there to be metabolized by other coliforms. Think other coliforms like E. coli, for example. So other coliforms that may also be present in the sample. These other coliforms prefer lactose and sucrose over lysine. So they will use lots of lactose and sucrose that's there in such large quantities and they will result in yellow colonies. So these sugars basically prevent these other species from using the lysine and causing a false positive for salmonella. Make sure that you, again, check out this playlist right here. Lots of videos on many different differential and selective augers, as well as other microbiology diagnostic tests. So check it out. Grab the picture of the final board so you can study it in the link in the description box below. And thank you for watching Biology Professor. See you guys next time.